Welcome to the Dave Williams Wealth Advantage. Commentary for marketplace heroes, high achievers, entrepreneurs, and business leaders connected with the Great Commission. Now here is award-winning, best-selling author, Dr. Dave Williams. When I served as pastor for over 30 years, I discovered that upwards of 75% of all the prayer requests that came in were related to financial problems. I found that many Christians actually believe their problems relate to finances. But listen to me, that's a myth. It's what I call a belief trap. The truth is, and you must believe this, no believer who is in covenant with God through Jesus Christ has a money problem. Now, they may believe it's a money problem, but actually it's a problem in another area, an area like a faith problem, obedience problem, knowledge problem. But let's look at some of the top problems that are not really money problems, but you think they are. No believer has a money problem, but they may have an obedience problem. Now listen, every one of God's children could easily be a millionaire if they'd only obey God's word and practice responsiveness to the Holy Spirit's voice and stay connected to the Great Commission. God said to Isaiah, Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. And though they're red like crimson, they shall be like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the best of the land. Now, one translation puts it this way. If you will only let me help you, if you will only obey, then I'll make you rich. In Malachi chapter 3, we read about tithing, making offerings to the Lord. Will a man rob God? Yet you've robbed me. You say, in what way have we robbed you? And God answers back in tithes and offerings. That's 10% plus offerings. The result, verse 9, you're cursed with a curse, for you've robbed me. Now, a person who does not practice tithing will find his or her finances under a curse. Even this whole nation. If you read the first two chapters of Haggai, you'll find the same situation. The people experienced low harvests and all kinds of financial problems because they were putting their own interests first instead of God's interests. Now in verse 10, God gives a solution. He said, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try. That means test or prove me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. You must take action on this directive. God says, prove me. If I will not open you the windows of heaven, there's promise one, promise two. He said, and I'll pour out for you such blessing, there'll not be room enough to receive it. Here's promise three. I will rebuke the devourer for your sake so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. But he doesn't stop there. He gives another promise in verse 12. He said, in all nations will call you blessed because you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. You see, before every outrageous financial blessing, God requires outrageous obedience in finances. I remember a man who told me he couldn't tithe to the church for a few years because he was tithing to his daughter in college. That's disobedience. The scriptures say in Leviticus 27, the tithe is the Lord's. And Jesus said, you should tithe but not neglect other important things. Matthew 23, 23. Another person told me that God didn't heal her teeth, so she was going to use her tithe money to pay for tooth repairs. That's disobedience. There's always a test to prove whether or not you follow God's plan or some other plan. Here's a verse that causes many people a big problem. Matthew 25, 29. To those who use well what they're given, even more will be given but they will have an abundance. It says, and they'll have an abundance. But from those who do nothing, even the little they have will be taken from them. You see, Jesus said this, if you're faithful in little things, you'll be faithful in larger ones, but if you're dis dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. And if you're untrustworthy about worldly wealth, Jesus said, who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? And then he said, if you're not faithful with other people's things, why should you be trusted with things of your own? So it's clear the real problem is never really a money problem, but maybe an obedience problem. 
Now, if you're a tither and you give generously in offerings, yet you're still not experiencing the promises, there could be two other reasons that we'll discuss the next time we're together on this program. I'm Dave Williams, author of Coming Into the Wealthy Place, reminding you that as a believer, you don't have a money problem. Dave Williams is the author of Coming Into the Wealthy Place and The Road to Radical Riches. We have several resources available in print and on audio media. Our web address is DaveWilliams.com. We look forward to hearing from you and be sure to join us for the next Dave Williams Wealth Advantage.